Welcome to Lesson 4.2, Video 2, Invest in Now or Later. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, what the benefits are of investing now versus later and also uh, learn a little bit about stocks. So just to start us off, which do you think is better? A, starting to invest a little bit now or B, waiting a while and then you can invest more money later. So as a teenager, you're probably not earning as much. The older you get, the more money you earn. Do you think it's better to wait until you can like deposit more money or invest more money? Or do you think it's better to just invest what you can as soon as possible? This is the question that we're going to be answering today. So let's talk about some reasons to invest. So an income investment provides expected earnings, usually in predictable amounts. So that might be earned interest from a savings account um, or some checking account. Uh, dividends, which is just a share of profits that some companies pay to their stockholders or rent payments. So if you have a, if you own a rental property, you can rent that out to other people and that's gonna get you predictable income um, in the form of rent. There's also growth on investments, which are purchased because of the potential that the value will increase over time. And that's gonna be unpredictable. That could be something that's gonna increase or it could decrease month to month, week to week. And that's things like real estate, businesses, crops, precious metals, and stocks. So those are all growth investments versus income investments. All right, um, if you look in your notes, you should see something that looks like this. You're gonna click this link right here. And that's going to bring you to activity 4.4, which has this table that we're gonna use to answer the questions. You might just wanna like zoom in. That way you can see. Um, we are comparing Whitney investments. So if she started investing at age 18, and it looks like she's investing $2,000 every single year for the first 10 years, and then she's gonna stop. And we can see exactly how much her investment is growing until age 65. And we're gonna compare that to if Whitney doesn't start investing until age 31. So she decides she's not gonna start until she's got a full-time job where she's making a predictable income. So she's gonna start later and she's investing $2,000 annually over 35 years. She's investing for a lot longer. And we can compare how much money she'll have in total when she decides to retire at age 65. So if she's investing $2,000 a year for 10 years, starting at age 18, how much will she have invested? That's gonna be $20,000, 2,000 times 10 is 20,000. And if we look on that table, we can see that she's gonna have $386,718 by age 65. Uh, complete the second one. So how much will she have invested in total if she's investing 2,000 a year for 35 years? That's gonna be 70,000. You can see that in the table. And how much will she have had uh, in total by age 65? It looks like that's gonna be 295,827. So what do you think is the cost of starting to invest later? For Whitney, we can see exactly what the cost is. There's a difference of $50,000. So she's invested $50,000 more and she's getting $9,000, almost $10,000 less by the age of 65. That math is wrong. It's almost a full $100,000 less. I think that should be 90,000. That's, I put the comma in the wrong place. It's 90,891, so almost, uh, almost $91,000. All right, let's talk about stocks. So the ways, one of the ways that you can invest money that is going to potentially have the highest impact is by investing in stocks. We're gonna talk about diversification and you're gonna be looking at that a little bit, I think, during your asynchronous work today. 
Um, but investing in stocks is a quick and easy way to invest money. Um, a stock is a share of a business. So businesses will sell shares of stock to raise money to run that business. Somebody who buys stock owns a portion of the business depending upon how many shares are purchased. A shareholder doesn't take on responsibilities of running the company, but a company employee might happen to be a shareholder. And a shareholder is allowed one vote per share when electing board members at shareholder meetings. So usually whoever like the CEO of a company is will make sure that they have a majority, they own a majority of the shares in that company. They're not going to just sell off all of them um, because those shares do actually have like input into what happens within the company. Um, company management might decide to share part of the profits by paying dividends to shareholders. And that's gonna be cash or shares of stock. Um, and then the price of stock shares varies based on what people are willing to pay. So when you're investing in the stock market, you're investing in sort of what people believe this company to be worth and what they are willing to spend to invest in it. So it is kind of a gamble um, because people can say that they're willing to spend a lot of money to invest in a stock or that they're not willing to spend a lot. That doesn't necessarily have to do with how much the company is actually worth. Um, each stock has a unique ticker symbol. A ticker symbol is just an abbreviated name for whatever the company is. Um, and that's what you'll see if you're ever like looking at the news and they'll have those like letters going by at the bottom, those are usually ticker symbols for stocks because they'll show how they're like going up or going down over the course of the day. And take a second and guess the names for those four companies. So we've got GE, NFLX, F, and DPS. And those are General Electric, Netflix, Ford, and then Dr. Pepper slash Snapple, which I guess are the same company, which I didn't know. All right, so how to actually buy a stock. So first you're gonna select a broker. There are lots of apps that you can use today. You don't actually like, have to call in um, to get a broker. And a broker is just somebody who's gonna purchase stocks or sell stocks for you, because um, you're not allowed to just do that yourself. You are gonna then deposit cash to open a brokerage account. And that's the money that the broker is then gonna use to buy stocks. You're going to decide on what you want to buy or sell once you've actually started purchasing stock um, and shares in stock. And then you are going to place a bid or an ask order with the broker to buy or sell however much of a stock at a certain price. You're gonna then place that order for the broker to complete trade through an exchange. And that might be the New York Stock Exchange or it might be the NASDAQ. It's going to be though through some sort of stock exchange. You pay a transaction fee to the broker at the time that you're buying or selling that stock. Um, and that's basically because like brokers need to get paid to do their jobs and you're gonna pay them usually by like a percentage of whatever it is that you're purchasing. Um, and then you wanna pay attention to your stock news and the price of your stocks uh, and then keep a record of which stocks you're buying and selling just for tax reporting because that is something that needs to get reported on your taxes. That's just a quick overview of how you buy or sell stocks. Um, at this point, it's a lot easier because there are apps and there are free apps that will do sort of all of this for you. Um, and you are going to pick from stocks that you wanna study. And the way to do this is just sort of think about what do you like? What kinds of things do you buy and use? What companies do you believe in? Um, what do you think consumers need in you. So like, what do you think people are really needing right now or going to be buying a lot right now? Um, what kinds of products or industries are familiar to you or do you like? And what trends do you see? So like particularly with COVID, you could see like a huge increase in internet-based stocks, right? Uh, things like Zoom and Netflix, Disney, where people staying at home and having to change the way they do their jobs, so those stocks went through the roof um, once the pandemic hit. And so those are things that people might think about when they're deciding on which stocks they're going to purchase. 